You know these studies they advertise everywhere on the web and in the newspaper? The ones that offer you compensation ranging from $500 to $5,000, depending on the symptoms you get. Well, guess what? I never wanted to be part of one. These things always gave me the creeps. Yeah, okay. They were doing good work trying to figure out an antidote or a vaccine to this or that disease or virus. It's selfless and all, but I never wanted to be a human guinea pig. It didn't sound like easy money, unlike what some people might believe. It's not an opportunity for quick cash if your skin ends up discolored, or you end up blind in one eye because of their tests. I'd already decided from a young age that I wasn't going to give in to those get-rich-quick schemes, even in the name of health. One of my friends used to do drug testing in college to pay for his rent and studies. And I remember that at some point, he spent an entire week in the hospital with severe dehydration because the med he tested gave him diarrhea. I mean, yeah, we all had a good laugh about it, but... I was also scared to lose him when I saw him in the hospital bed. So, I guess you can get why I was never too thrilled about being a test subject for anything. Until I saw this ad in the newspaper one morning. This certain computer science institute was having a study and offering $7,000 to the participants. I mean, of course. I expected this to be a joke, or for the number of participants to be so low. I would have no chance to get in. You see, I wasn't that strapped for cash. I had an average job as an analyst for a semi-important bank, and my wife was a freelance copywriter in her free time. With a baby on the way, though, 7000 didn't seem like it would hurt. And plus, it's not like they were going to be testing on me. They were experimenting on my computer. Now, I didn't know much about the criteria required to participate in the study, but I thought, hey, why not? I could give it a chance. I had nothing to lose, especially since this wasn't a health place, and I wouldn't have to test experimental drugs. It was a computer science institute, so I expected it had something to do with how I use my computer. I called the number during my lunch break and a very feminine voice answered me. I asked about the details and information, and she told me there was a group meeting planned soon. I was told to bring my computer with me, whether it be my laptop or desktop. I asked if there was anything else I needed, and she confirmed with me that the only thing I needed was to be there during the group meeting and have my computer with me. She then asked for my number, and said that she would call me a week before the meeting. The scientists were trying to get at least 20 potential candidates before starting the session, and for now, I was the 10th to call this morning. With a smile in her voice, she assured me I would be getting a call soon. Satisfied, I wished her a good day and then promptly forgot about it for the next week. I received a call about 10 days later, informing me that the group meeting would happen on a Friday morning a week from now. I made arrangements with my job. Plus, they said the meat was compensated $125, so even if I wasn't chosen, I'd still make $125 and not have to work for the day. I was losing a little, but not enough that it was bothering me. When the time came, I picked up my laptop and made my way to the institute. It was in the next town, so it took me about 40 minutes to get there and 15 more minutes to find parking. Fortunately, I'd given myself enough time to get there, get a coffee, and still have enough time to waste that I wouldn't be late. Even with the parking delay, I was there a solid 10 minutes early. The building I was going into was pretty modern, and I wondered if the Computer Science Institute was new because it smelled new when I entered it. Not that I passed by this town often enough to know that. I thought maybe it was just well-maintained. I soon passed the janitor and gave him a quick hello, but he didn't reply. He stared at me and waved, and then I noticed 
the earbuds in his ears. You do you, my guy. I'd be listening to music all day, too, if I had to clean this already pristine-looking building. The meeting was on the fifth floor, so I got to the elevators and pressed the buttons. No lights appeared. I heard the janitor call for me, and he made an empty gesture in mid-air to tell me that the elevators were off. And damn, I was glad that I only had my laptop. I couldn't imagine climbing five sets of stairs with a desktop. I wasn't in good enough shape for that. Still, I made my way up those stairs and barely made it to the meeting. The doors closed right after me, and I was surprised to see that there were about 30 people in the room. I took a seat as a speaker got on the stage and started talking about human interaction with machines, especially our personal computers. Like most, I wasn't interested in what they wanted to do with the computer. They could collect all my data if they wished to. I never used that computer for online transactions and it wasn't going to change. This was my laptop, the one I used mostly for gaming, browsing Facebook and Twitter or, <laughs> well, porn. I had nothing too shameful to hide either. The spokesperson kept rambling on and on for another 15 minutes before saying they'd be starting the interview soon. Since they had our names, they would be calling us one by one. If we wanted to drop out of the study, we could go to the receptionist, collect our check, and leave. About three or four people did that. Either they only wanted a quick buck and didn't care about the thousands, or they decided this study wasn't for them. And hopefully, I wouldn't have to wait three hours to get my interview. Now, I was pleasantly surprised when my name was called first. I made my way to the office, closed the door, and deposited my laptop on the desk. There were two people for the interview, a man and a woman. The woman had a severe gaze, a brown hair tied in a knot behind her head. She was also wearing one of those scientists' white vests, which seemed odd considering this was a computer science lab. It's not like they were playing with chemicals around here. Only codes, binaries, and, well, I don't know, whatever else related to computers. I'm no expert. It took me a whole month to learn my way around my last iPad. Now, she remained silent while the man explained to me what they were going to do with my computer. Then said something about my service. It was strange, considering that I had never mentioned that I used to be in the army. And I suppose they had access to some basic profile information, and it didn't bother me. But, in retrospect, I should have been worried. He explained how he was simply going to install a program onto my computer that read everything I did with it. Keyboard touches, camera activity, web browsing, gaming, etc., etc., etc. They reassured me about the camera, though telling me that the program would only record when I would enable it. Its goal wasn't to spy on us, but to better understand the human interaction with the machine. I didn't need to tell them I was already sold on the project the moment I saw the 7k potential reward, but I did ask how long the project was to last, and when would I know how much I was getting. The answer I got was not satisfying. But it was also not satisfactory. I mean, you feel me? The man confirmed with me that the payment would range anywhere between 2000 and 5000 you know, depending on the quantity of information. The more I used the computer, the more I would get paid. I asked if there was a minimum use I should consider. But they replied that I should just use it as I usually would. Increased activity for the sake of experiment would risk compromising the research. Then went on to explain that it wasn't the number of hours that mattered, but rather how I used the computer. Then with a smile he added that I could only use it for one hour a week, and it would be more valuable if I used it 15 hours a day for the next month. 
The project was to last anywhere between one and three months. So, they explained why the payment was so big. I then had to sign an NDA about the study, and a few more papers binding me to the study. I read diagonally, but it was just a basic contract saying I was willingly giving my assets away and participating in the study. I then left my laptop in their care, and the receptionist called me back about 20 minutes later to give me my computer. I went home and enjoyed the rest of the day until my wife came home from running some errands. I went about using my computer as I usually would. After a week, I'd almost forgotten the program had been installed on my laptop. Outside of the little brain emoticon in my notification area, nothing looked out of place on my computer. There were no notifications, and even if I clicked the brain, I couldn't access it. So, I simply kept using my computer like I usually would, without much care. About a month into the program, I had started having those weird cravings. Now, I'm lactose intolerant, but I remember that at 9pm on a Friday, I rushed to a grocery store to get brie. You know, the cheese. Now, I know it doesn't sound too weird, but we barely ever ate cheese at home. And I was okay with that because of my intolerance. Now, I kid you not, I ate the whole thing in the supermarket parking lot. Then I went home and promptly regretted it for hours. My stomach cramped and I had the most violent... Well, you get the point. I didn't use my computer at all that night. Another evening, about three weeks later, I decided to take a walk with my wife. The weather was beautiful and we ate a lot at dinner, so I thought it would be the perfect time for a walk in the park. We met my wife's sister, whom I should tell you is a massive pain in my ass, and I don't know why, but that evening, I had no restraints. No matter what she was talking about, I sighed, groaned, I rolled my eyes, and looked at my watch. Whenever she was there, I would usually suck it up for my wife and put on a fake smile. That night, I was utterly incapable of that. Even my wife noticed how rude I was being and asked me what was up with that. I couldn't tell her. I didn't know. And if only it had stopped at that. A week later, I felt like I was being watched. So I contacted the Computer Science Institute and told them how I felt. They told me I could always return the laptop early, but if I did, I wouldn't get paid for it. I was already more than a month and a half into the experiment. It would have been a shame to give up that amount of money. I had them confirm to me that the cameras weren't used and asked them if I could disable my camera, to which they replied I could, but that it might influence the payment as well if I stopped all interactions with my camera. I didn't think it mattered much since I only used the camera once a week to talk to my sister in Ontario. I could always deactivate and reactivate it when necessary. Another week passed and I kept looking over my shoulders and became even ruder. I nearly lost my job one morning when I told my boss to suck it. And I thought that I had kept it internally. But when I saw his face become stern, I knew I'd said it out loud. I quickly apologized and explained that I was feeling a little under the weather Blame the stress at home with the baby coming, and I think he accepted it. Two months into the experiment, I had to have a visit with the doctor because I felt like I had no filter anymore. Someone pissed me off? Well, I flipped them off without second thoughts. My mother said something wrong? She was getting called a bitch. The doctor was tempted to diagnose me with borderline personality disorder. But since the change had been so sudden, he needed me to have visits with a psychiatrist. At this point, I still hadn't linked the computer study in my behavioral issues. It's only when I punched the wall near my wife's face that I genuinely realized something was wrong with me. I didn't know why, 
but I asked her to give me two weeks. And so, with seven months belly full of baby, I sent her away to her sister's, and then I called sick and to work. I spent the remaining two weeks of the computer study googling ways to counter BPD or anger issues. During that period of solitude, I also had terrible nightmares about the time I was in the army. I remember the drills. I remember the voice of the sergeant that shouted at me in the morning to wake me up and shouted at me when it was curfew. I hadn't thought about these years at all in the last seven years, and I was now waking up expecting the Sarge in my face. It only sent me spiraling down even more. The Computer Science Institute called me as I was getting a rope around my neck. I was ready to jump and hang myself. In a matter of three months, my life had deteriorated so much, I thought that ending it was the only way. But, then I thought about Clara and the baby, and how those few thousands of dollars would help. I did have money in my bank account for them, but those few thousand would be a great help. I could delay for one day. I undid the noose around my neck and grabbed my laptop. I made my way back to the institute and asked for my check. I got the full $7,000. When I asked why the woman, who had been all severe the first time we met, had a different gleam in her eyes, she said that they were pleased with the results of their analysis. But I was confused. How could they know? They hadn't even checked the data and pulled the program out of my computer. She said not to worry. That all the data had been pulled as it came in. I was tired, mentally drained, and I didn't want to question it. It's been three years now. My daughter is a healthy two-year-old and knows nothing of the hole in the wall and my descent to hell. That 7,000? Well, I spent at least 2,000 on the psychiatrist, and with the help and support of my wife, I was back to myself. Doctors said that they hadn't seen my condition often, but said it was PTSD related and gave me anxiety meds to calm me down. But I don't believe it, neither should you. Avoid becoming a test subject, even for something as innocuous as computer science. I can't prove anything, and I did get paid, but it nearly cost me my life.